All right, before I forgot, I wanted to come and show you how I use alternate card borders. So you can see I've changed to a card border that takes a much larger card art. And as you can see, as I adjust the width of the crop rectangle, it may be easier to see if I just repeat, uh, you can see that it kind of changes, but it's definitely not perfect. So you're going to have to come and play with the tiling offset too a little bit and the height. And you can link these to variables if you'd like, but um, the problem is that this tiling and offset is totally separate from this tiling and offset. So once you've got the card rectangle looking right, you still do have to set the tiling and offset accordingly. You can see it still looks good with this, with this frame border design. Okay, so this is pretty great and all, but what if we could make things just a little more interesting? In part two, I uh, want your cozy drink. I'm going to be showing you how to give this card a lifelike holographic effect. The first thing I'm going to do is import some holographic overlays I've got laying around. You can find these on the internet. You can even create your own in Photoshop, but these are just some that I found through Google searching. They were free, but these are not being used in a commercial setting, so I think it's okay. All right, back in Shader Graph, you can see our simple card shader we set up last time. And this time we are going to go ahead and add a little more logic uh, with this texture before it gets cropped and rendered on top of the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and give us some space here. So the first thing, of course, is I'm going to make a texture 2D property for the holographic overlay. And of course, I'm going to make a boolean for enable holographic. So the easy thing to do would just be to go ahead and sample your texture 2D. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set sampler state to repeat in this case. And it would help if I assigned a holographic overlay. I think I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick five for this one. I like five pretty well. I uh, will just go ahead and attempt to blend these two. We will drag the output of this texture into the base, and then the blend is the holographic overlay. And I'm going to set the screen mode to vivid light. And you can see it doesn't really look that good. And things can be changed and manipulated. The blend can be tweaked. You can choose to have no blend at all, of course. Or you can choose to make it a bright blend or a dark blend. Um, in my case, I find that the mode that you use here kind of depends on what holographic overlay you want to use. So as you can see, with overlay, it doesn't really change anything too much. You can see with vivid light, though, with this particular texture, it really makes some crazy light effects. Like that right there, that's definitely a holographic card. That's when you're tilting it the other way and that's when you're tilting it one way. So how can we control this opacity value using, say, the camera or the view direction of the object to adjust how much or how little of the blend we're getting? <clears throat> Before it gets output into the lerp over here, where it is combined and cropped. Luckily, I found a way to do such a thing, and believe it or not, it wasn't that hard to get working just required a lot of tweaking in the first place to get it perfect so I'm going to come and create this view direction node here I want to set this view direction node to tangent and I'm going to go ahead and output this into a twist variable and I'm going to put this in as the UV and you can see we get this crazy swirl now if I change the strength you can see that pretty much changes the scale of the swirl I find that where I like it to be is right about 3.6. And essentially, we are using this to manipulate the opacity and also distort the blend a little bit. So what I do is I take this value once I'm pretty well happy with how it looks, and I output this into a split node. OK, so I use the R or X value here. And I pretty much just go ahead and put that directly into the opacity layer. And you can see now in the card view, as I'm 
moving the card, you can see the overlay moving a little bit. But that's a little too intense. It's a little too harsh. It's not blended at all. So what I find helps with that is playing with the offset a little bit can help with that. You can see if I make that negative, it kind of starts to blend it just a little bit more. And yeah, that's a little better, but it's still too much too harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and define a holographic intensity variable over here. I'm going to default it to one to start with and then we can play with that later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this on a manually controlled lerp. And in this case, we're going to lerp between our X value and our chosen maximum holographic intensity. That's what this value is. Take this X value into here. And we control this manually and you can see how it kind of controls the fade of it. The softer it is, the softer our effect is going to be. So I'll take this output and I'll toss it into the opacity right there. And as you can see, it creates a much more subtle shine effect if we need to tone that down a little bit so we get a little more of the blues, you can see how that looks. Equally so. Now we can use the T value to adjust how much or how little of that effect we want. So I kind of like it like that. That's quite a, quite a striking effect. But in my specific case, I wanted a little bit more of the blue. So in my case, I'm using 0.51. You can see how changing the view direction changes how this holographic overlay looks. Now, it doesn't look great with all cards, of course. It tends to look good with bright colored cards, more so than it does with dark colored cards. And of course, playing with these values helps a bunch too, and understanding how these values affect the way it makes the shine look. These are just some values that I've found work pretty well for me. And of course, it always looks better in the actual Unity scene view with lighting than it does in here. Now there's still one more step though. I created a, an enable holographic variable here, but I haven't yet implemented it. And um, basically what I do here is I hook this up to another branch node. And basically, if the hologram is true, we're going to use the opacity value defined. Otherwise, we're just going to have the opacity to false, which is the equivalent of no blend. And we can just pass that in there. And boom, you can see no holograph. If I come and check this off, boom, we have holograph again. Once again, just like everything else on this shader, you can assign any of these properties to be changed by a material property block at runtime. All right, so let's come back to our scene view and let's see how this looks. We're going to go ahead and try this holographic overlay with the Dark Magician Girl. And if I turn that on, ooh, you can see that's a little ugly. And of course, that's why we have the holographic intensity variable. Adjust the holographic intensity a little bit until she looks okay with less garbage colors on there. Can tweak this in a negative direction and override it to go bright, or tweak this in a positive direction to override it to go black, or I can just put it somewhere pretty low, like 0.317. And then if I come here and shine that, you can see, yeah, this isn't really too great of an overlay. This overlay happens to work really well. I quite like this one a lot. And this looks good on most cards, too. Come here, change that, and then, yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make your holographic card overlay and shader graph. Till next time, I'll see you guys.